The last time on Building Resilience, we were installing thick sheets of styrofoam in a basement that had almost enough headroom. They installed the perimeter sheets first, filled in the little ones, and cut holes for pipes. That was after digging down a foot and a half to add an interior footing curb. In designing the insulated heated slab, the architects chose EPS insulation, expanded polystyrene, because it's better for climate change. But EPS isn't as good under a slab as XPS, extruded polystyrene. This is styrofoam. It's a product that we're all familiar with, extruded polystyrene from DuPont. This is a new product though. This is their ST100 product, um, 25 PSI and a 0.1% water absorption. So it's meeting our requirements for compression resistance and resistance to taking on moisture. However, this one also uses this new blue edge technology and is a zero ozone depletion product. So we're now at a near zero GWP product that has all of the characteristics that we need for the application at hand. And this week, the application at hand is water control. Specifically, installing a WRB, window flashing, and a rain screen on this siding retrofit. And because sequences of construction are not always ideal in remodeling, we installed some of the windows before installing the HydroGap SA weather resistive barrier. That SA stands for self adhered, and that means the WRB is also great at being an air barrier. But let's back up and talk about what we're doing overall and why. This cute mid century home is in pretty decent shape, but after 70 years, it's time that we gave this WRB an upgrade. Now we're gonna be replacing a lot of the cladding on the house, we're gonna leave some of the old stone, and on this addition that is about 10 years old, we're going to leave the felt and the windows in place, because they're in good shape. But you can see that the felt's not very good at stopping air infiltration into the home. Same thing with these big, wide, tongue and groove boards. They're beautiful, but they are notoriously leaky especially as things get pieced in around the windows. So we're gonna wrap this house in a self-adhered building wrap, and we're gonna start with the window openings. To get those first couple of windows in, Joseph cuts wide strips of hydrogap. He's got a sweet little system here where he marked the step so that he can align a straight edge after butting the hydrogap into the riser. I mean, it's probably not exact enough to air seal a piano, but we're not air sealing a piano. We're air sealing a window opening. Well, Stephen is air sealing the window opening. He begins by tacking a piece of siding to the bottom sill. This pushes any water that leaks in, out, and away from the wall. Now, he begins peeling his strips and placing them on the framing. He doesn't worry too much about detailing the corners, because these strips will be covered by liquid flashing. These strips are really just for sealing the edge to tie in the hydro gap later. He bridges the sheathing all the way back to the framing to eliminate sneaky air leak pathways, sealing the sill, jams, and window head. And because he's bothering to install all this stuff, he bothers to make sure it'll stick. The hydroflash liquid flashing is applied over the window sill to seal the vulnerable corners and protect the framing below. The point of spreading this is to create a monolithic layer of flashing that will always seal the windowsill against water. It looks like he uses the little nubs for a thickness gauge, but he actually checks his work with a wet mill gauge too. After the hydroflash is set up, he installs the windows, doing his best not to smack the window frame with his framing hammer. He seals the window to the WRB with flashing tape, carefully adhering the tape to the actual window frame, not just the flange. This will give a superior air seal, even if it's a little sticky to execute. Now that the highest windows are installed, they turn to the easy stuff, installing big rolls of self-adhered WRB to the low part of the house with the help of the whole crew. The first step is snapping a line. The next step is rolling out a boatload of hydrogap and peeling off that top release sheet. They all put the top of the sheet on the line and smooth it down. Because the adhesive is acrylic, it's easy to peel back and reposition. 
it's very easy to pull gently from the bottom to remove wrinkles while smoothing the top part downward. When the top section seems good, they peel off the lower release sheet and work the rest of the sheet into place. This is a great wall to shoot video on because of all the obstructions. Vent duct, pipes, wires, plenty of opportunity to illustrate how to seal this stuff right. Joseph bridges the wall sheathing in the duct boot with the SA, and Saul does the same thing with the wires. A final layer of Hydro Flash tightens the whole assembly even more. Meanwhile, Saul's marking out a line for the next Hydro Gap course. The 4 inch overlap requirement is really easy to remember because there's a giant dotted line along the whole top of the sheet. They climb their ladders and snap the line and it's completely anticlimactic. Boringest line snap ever. Kicking the roll across the lawn makes up for it a little bit, but not much. With the next course cut to length, they climb the ladders and stick it to the line. Again, concentrating on getting the top of the sheet right first. Saul cuts around a roof return at the bottom of the gable and just slowly and carefully works the WRB into place before cutting off the excess. With the top all set, they peel away the bottom release sheet again and smooth that into place. Once again, they roll the adhesive into the substrate's surface topography and tie it into the window strips that this whole process started with. With the HydroGap SA installed, the house is significantly tighter against air leaks and water leaks. But one more layer adds water resilience. Slicker Max Rain Screen. It's an entangled mesh that allows liquid water to drain down and out while allowing air movement in any direction. Both of those things promote drying. To install it, you basically align the bottom of the sheet where you want the siding to stop and smack a staple in the top. At the bottom, tuck the flap under to keep the bugs out, and at the corners, just wrap it around. On this side of the house, Stephen gets a little optimistic about how much rain screen they'll need to cover this wall. But Saul doesn't say anything about it. He just aligns the slicker max with the edge of the previous piece and slaps it with his stapler. At the other end, Stephen's optimism is starting to cloud over, and he loses track of his feet. That's not true. He was working around those obstructions that Joseph was sealing earlier. With the extra slicker mac wrestled under control, they have another wall in the books and Stephen heads off for a solo section. Again, at this point the wall is already waterproof. The slicker max adds a layer of resilience to the wall system by letting water out. The facing on this product is for mortar-based claddings like stucco, so layering the flap is unnecessary, unless you want your customers to think you give a darn about your work product. Speaking of giving a darn about your work product, we're making sure this floor system is tight and clean, because the boss is coming by the studio shed today, and she's got her stuffed bunny with her. After that, we'll bend some flashings to use in walls with site-built exterior insulation panels. We're using force field sheathing from Georgia Pacific and Styrofoam XPS from DuPont. After the walls are up, we'll tape the seams tightly. And that'll keep the weather where it's supposed to be. And that's how you do building resilience.